Don't worry, Bobby. We're gonna make it through this and find your mom. I promise. A few snowflakes can't stop me. Aviva, I've got contact with Chris. I'm on my last flipper. I can't dread water much longer. Floating like bobbers? How are they doing that? Pharyngeal throat sacs. Blow them up and you've got a built-in life preserver. Increíble. I need something that can inflate like a balloon in the water. If it's full of air, it'll rise when it's underwater. If I can just integrate this into the walrus power suit programming, it just might keep Chris afloat. Bobby! Why'd you have to be so white? Darn camouflage. Bobby! Gotcha! I need your polar bear power, now! The strength of a polar bear with mighty claws to boot! For no slip power! It worked! Uh-oh. Ah! I can't stay afloat anymore! Okay, it's ready to go. Energizing, oh, hurry! Zap it! Keep breathing, walrus! Got it! Yes! A built-in life preserver! Riding out the storm, walrus style! Uh-oh! Ah! Oh, we just lost all communication with them. Let's hope their creature powers see them through. But Zack still has the moms. Send the alert to the Wildcrats kids. Our eyes and ears are around the world. Oh, hey, we got something from Nua. Hey, Cookie, Zach's just passing my village. He must be heading to the big glacier. 68 north, 65 west. Perfecto! I gotta get out there. Oh, it worked! Storm's over, and I'm still floating. Woohoo! That was a wild ride! I hope Martin's okay. Martin, where are you, bro? Love the polar bear fur, Poby. Kept us warm and toasty down to 30 degrees below zero. Martin! Huh? Snow camo! Look, I got polar bear powers. Nice! Ow! Hey, we've still got some creatures to rescue. I'm gonna monitor your depth and pressure. You're at 457 meters. The seawater above you is putting 4,700 kilopascals of pressure on you. That's as heavy as wearing a school bus as a hat. You're right. That is a lot of weight. And a lot of pressure. How are you feeling? Actually, okay. So the creature power suits must be working their biological magic. There she is. Wait, but where's Bumper? He was just with us. I'll use my sonar to look for him. It must be that he can't dive any deeper than that. Yeah, he's just a kid. He can't dive as deep as the adults. So he's got to hang out and wait when his mom dives super deep. I'll keep an eye on him with my sonar, just like a whale would. And speaking of mother sperm whale, she's still sinking. Let's go. All right, bumper safe. Whoa. There she is. 900 meters and still hanging in. Oh, it's a good thing the sperm whale holds the record as the deepest diving, air breathing animal. But you're entering the midnight zone. It looks like even a sperm whale can't go deeper than that. Oh, grab her. Gotcha! With my tentacle club. A 40,000 kilogram sperm whale is really heavy, even underwater. Yes, we're reversing her fall. Hey, and this is another never before seen creature moment. Huh? 
Squid and Well Powers working together! <laughs> oh, yeah! Oh, better check on Bumper. A giant squid! Wait, it's a different body shape. Bigger, three meters longer. It's a colossal squid! A newly discovered species. It's after Bumper! I gotta get there first! Go, Chris, go! No, oh, but hurry back! I'm running out of squid strength! Ah, oh, we're sinking! Who's gonna get there first? I can't tell. Too close to call. Hurry, Moby Chris! My sonic boom can. A powerful whale sound that can stun the squid. Arms off! Oh, that's it. You're hungry. Hey, and this willow thicket is full of prime winter hare food. Buds, bark. It's grasses, plants, and roots in the summer. Buds and bark in the winter. You know, if those hispid hares got hungry, they'd probably be looking for the same kind of food. Uh-oh. Uh, Chris? Hey, it's you! <laughs> hey, Chris, come in! Somebody need a ride? Oh, cold. Ha! <laughs> We're on a roll now! Ah! <laughs> Only one more hispid left to find. Uh-oh, we've seen this before. Not a good sign. He's trying to blend in with the snow, but why? <gasps> a lynx. I'm sticking with you, Avalanche. Chris, go, 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 go. Save the hispid. What? Just leave you here with her? We're as well hidden as it gets. Besides, Avalanche knows what he's doing. We'll be fine. All right, be careful, bro. You do know what you're doing, don't you? Snow Runner to Tartuga HQ, come in! Go, Snow Runner! I'm coming in with Hispid number two. Hi. Okay, that was Chris Pratt in a basilisk suit. Looks like a creature rescue! Go, go Chris, Chris go. go! Go, Go, Chris, go! go. Yeah. Cold, cold! <laughs> Oh, you gotta admire this hair hunting specialist. With that dense winter fur and those massive paws that keep her on top of the snow, just like you, Avalanche. She matches you feature for feature. She even spreads her toes with every step to make them even bigger, better snow feet. Oh, this is not good. Run! Look out! Oh! Nice one! Woo. The snow diving technique! That bought us an extra stride or two! Yes, the home thicket! Almost there! Go, 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 go! Okay, Chris? No, I can't stand it anymore. I need winter feet. Um, well, I kind of switched gears. I'm making something even better for you, a lynx disc. I've made lots of cats so I can whip that one off in no time, much faster than the hair. I'm almost done, super close. You sure? Promise. Okay, I'm heading back out. I hope Martin and Avalanche were able to avoid that lynx. Eh, that's not it. Gross. Puny one. Keep sucking those clams, you mustached blobs. Yeah. 
Chris, are you really hypnotized? No, we don't have walrus brains, so the skull caps won't work on us. But we gotta keep up the act till we figure out how to stop Zack. Be the walrus. Oh, I'm with you, bro. Hey, a lot less burping and a lot more sucking clam seal thingies. Uh-oh. Donita, whoo, you got here quickly. <laughs> my jet travels at the speed of style, darling. Where's my big pearl? Oh, you're so full of silly questions. And you're hiding something. What's going on, Zach? Ah, uh, it's a surprise. <laughs> I don't like surprises. But I like big pearls and big money, which you promised to make me. And you'll have both, thanks to the sealy thingies. <laughs> Those are walruses. Ugh, whatever. Don't worry, Blobby. We're gonna save you and your mom. I've waited long enough. Give me the giant pearl, Zack. A deal's a deal. All right, all right. Here's the truth. The Blobby thing, he stole it. I don't believe you. Ah, didn't think so. I'm not feeling so good. That last clam tasted like feet. I know. But we gotta keep it up until we figure out a way to save the walruses. I found the Arctic Pearl! Martin, you said that a little loud. Wait! That sounded like a wild rat. They must be around here someplace. I'll find them if it's the last thing I do! Or the next thing you do. Yeah, or no. What do you mean? They're the walruses who don't resemble walruses whatsoever! Ugh, get them! Hand over the Arctic Pearl, wild rat. Forget it. It belongs in the museum. It belongs to Donita. And walruses belong living free and in the wild. You stole the Arctic Pearl? I thought you found it! Well, my Zackbot found it in the Arctic Museum. <laughs> it's a funny story, really. You promised me pearls, Zack. I want pearls now. And we need to make like a pearl and roll! Hey, get that pearl! Oops. Get, get it! I am so not impressed. Koki, finding a couple of mini crap brothers in a rocket jet out here is gonna be like finding a... A what? I don't know. Like finding a... A viva look in the willow thicket. A red box. What does he hear? of small mousy thing. <gasps> Wait, I just realized what finding the mini crap bros in a rocket jet out here would be like. What? Like finding a small mousy thing in a giant field of snow. Exactly, and that red box is finding and eating small mousy things. With a pretty impressive technique. Crap brothers, come in, answer your phone. We've got to find them fast, but they could be anywhere. What about a fox creature power suit? There's no time. But I have another idea. Hurry! <gasps> wow, those were some serious avalanches. Yeah, where'd they come from anyway? Uh-oh, this paradise just became a nightmare. Predators know about this Subnivian Zone too. This is crazy. You could be having a peaceful time down here, then boom, it's all over. I know, anything could be listening from up there. Listening for the voles skittling around and chewing. As long as no one makes any sudden loud noises, we should be fine. Uh, shh. Ah. Uh, shh. <sighs> ah, chew, 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 chew. Oops.
Oops. Hopefully nobody heard that. But let's get out of here anyway. Quietly, Martin. Drive quietly. We'll be back soon, Jimmy. Uh, I hope so. <laughs> Using the heat amplifier was a great idea, Viva. Thanks. If they're hidden somewhere in all of this snow, we'll find them. Let's just hope we're not too late. I just received a signal that you guys were in a collision. You bet we were, trying to get away from an octo-walrus shark. It chewed an arm right off my octopod. Oh, you might want to design an arm regeneration feature, Aviva. Arm regeneration? You mean when a predator bites off an octopus's arm, it grows back? Yeah, in three months, the octopus has a brand new arm. Wow, we're going to need every arm to find the creature power suit, and no arm munching new species is going to stop me. All right, let's go. Octo Walrus Shark, here we come. Chris, you're driving like a loony. Hey, Aviva, you sure designed squishy seatbelts on this thing. They feel like octopus arms. Seven? Eight. I like eight, but I miss seven. Whew, this guy must have floated in through the hole and used his camouflage to fit right in with the color of the chair. It's so cool how the color of an octopus changes in seconds. How does it do that? With small, stretchy colored sacs called chromatophores that change when it crawls along the surface. The tiniest piece of skin can have hundreds of chromatophores in them. Cool. I can add a camouflage feature to the outer panels of the octopod. Now, if only I could find my suits that easily. <gasps> Uh-oh, guys. I see a huge whale coming towards us. I hope it doesn't eat octopods. It's a bowhead whale. Don't worry, Aviva. They just eat small fish and plankton. Did you see that? What? That green and blue blast of light! I'd know that glow anywhere. It's my creature power suit's activating. Activating? I think Aviva's been underwater too long, Chris. No, I'm fine. I know what I saw. Out of the way, Chris. We've got to head towards that glow. Aviva, you might think you saw a glow of green and blue light, but you know, it was probably just some underwater plankton. <gasps> ah! Ah! It's a sea monster! It's a new species! Unbelievable! This underwater trench is full of bizarre new creatures. Move over, Jacques Cousteau. Chris Kratz heading for the record books. Now hang on, pal. Just let me get some footage. Ah, the sea monster has seven arms. <gasps> oh no, it's seven! But how? I don't know, Martin, but he just caught an act of mackerel. I knew it! That power glow is pure Aviva. And you guys say I didn't see it? So that's what happened. Seven was tangled up in the power suits all along. First, he must have touched the walrus. Then a shark. Then a bowhead whale. And finally, an Akka mackerel. So the Octo Walrus, Octo Shark, and Octo Whale weren't new species at all. Sorry, Chris. Now we know that Seven was the sea monster all along because he kept activating every time he touched another animal. I have an idea that just might get everything back to normal, but we'll have to use all of our Octo powers. It could be the only chance we have to save my suits. Without them, you'll never run with a cheetah, dive with a dolphin, or climb with a koala ever again. Aviva's right. To the creature rescue! <laughs> <laughs>